Blessed, most merciful Heavenly Father, I come before you humbly, Lord, and I beg and I plead, Lord, you give me the courage, the will, the words, the wisdom to speak what you've put in my heart to speak. And I pray all this in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. And I give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name I pray. Amen. Several years ago, I had a dream. And I became aware that I was walking in this huge building. It was so huge that I could not see the end of the building in any direction. In front of me, behind me, to my right, to my left. And as I, as I walked, I realized that I was walking up to a table that had a white tablecloth on it. And there was only one chair in the middle of this long table that went out of sight to my right and it went out of sight to my left. I remember thinking that this was a terrible waste of space, having this long table covered with a white tablecloth going out of sight to my right and out of sight to my left. Now I never turned and looked behind me, but I just seemed to know, I sensed there were millions maybe billions, billions of people waiting all to be called, standing behind me, waiting their turn. As I walked up to this very long table, there, were the, there was that one chair, and it had a man seated across from me at this long table. And as I walked up to this man, I noticed that he had sandals on his feet, and he wore a brilliant white robe. He had a beard, but it was not too long and he had kind of long hair but but it was not too long and his hair was a dark brown and, and had some curls in his hair and as I walked up to this man and I stood across from him I knew I knew that I was to be judged and I was thinking I was thinking I was a good person I didn't hurt anybody I didn't drink I didn't do drugs I didn't even curse but somehow I knew I was in trouble, big trouble. Try as I might, I just could not look up and look into his eyes. I kept my head low. I kept my head hung low, afraid to look into this man's eyes. I knew who he was. I knew he had all the power and all the authority over me. I saw no guards. I saw no angels. Only this man seated across from me. I walked up. And I stood across from this man who needed no introduction. I felt a, a strong, strong feeling of being ashamed. Ashamed and standing in judgment and knowing I was being judged. And I was guilty and I knew it. I was ashamed. I trembled in fear. I felt my knees bush, buckling and shaking. I just could not lift my head and look this man in the eyes. I just couldn't do it. But why? <clears throat> why, I thought. I, I was a good person. But I knew hell was full. <clears throat> I knew hell was full of good men. And I was sore afraid. I was ashamed. I stood before Jesus in judgment, and I trembled in fear. There was a book on the table. A very huge book, very thick, many pages. He opened the book, and he started to read. Now, he would shake his head. And he would read some more. He would make little noises sometimes like, hmm, or oh, or hmm. And then he'd shake his head and he'd turn a page. Slowly he read on. He read every page very carefully and completely. <clears throat> Everything I had ever done, every sin I had ever committed, was read out loud for everyone to hear. Our sins are exposed. For all to hear. All the things I had done in the dark were now exposed for all to hear and see. Now after all these years, sins I had forgotten about were laid bare before the whole world. I thought, I never looked, 
And though, and though I never looked this man in the eye, somehow I, I knew him. Somewhere I had seen him before. I had seen this man before, my dreams. I just was not sure, but I knew I had seen this man before. But where, I thought. And I would... And would this have any bearing on my judgment? Somehow I didn't think so. I stood there in my shame. I stood there as my sins were exposed before the whole world. I stood there with my head hung low. I could not look this man in the eye. Somehow I felt as if my clothes had been stripped from me, and I stood there in judgment, naked, shivering, shaking, afraid, for everyone to see me in all my shame. But everyone was laid naked, their sins were laid bare and exposed for all the world to see. I stood there knowing my judgment was just and true. I knew where I was going to spend eternity. I had heard all these warnings about hell, brimstone, fire, demons, and being tormented day and night for eternity without end. But still I thought, I was a good man. I prayed. I went to church. I gave to the poor. I paid tithes. How could this happen to a good man? But it was shown to me that I was not a good man at all. I followed a fake church, preaching a fake gospel, and so all my good works and all my good my gifts to this apostate church were as dung before God. It was too late for me, and now all my weeping, wailing, and praying could not save me, as it was too late for me now. But is but it is not too late for you. You still have a chance for salvation. You still can be saved out of God's wrath. First Thessalonians five and nine. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 24, 33 to 39. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now is the time to repent of all your sins and place your sins under the blood of Jesus and pray for Jesus to enter into your heart and give you a new heart to be with you to lead you and guide you all the days that you have upon this earth Jesus is coming very soon for his spotless bride to take his faithful home for those who get raptured out of here they will skip God's wrath upon the whole earth and that wrath is coming these are the last days and we are that last generation. Now is the time to pray and repent, and say the blessing over every meal, and carry your King James Bible everywhere you can. Now you may ask, what happened in my dream? Well, I woke up. Now if you are in sin, and if you are not washed in the blood and not born again, if you are following a feel-good church that is only leading you to hell, then you need to wake up. As there is no surviving what is coming without Jesus Christ. And not, and not a fake watered-down gospel with a fake watered-down Bible as well. Because what is coming will be beyond anything you can imagine in any horror, in any horror dream. The downfall of our church started when they started thinking that men could write a better Bible over God. If God is perfect, how can he write an inferior Bible? How can man improve upon God? The church started using these fake Bibles over God's Bible, the King James Bible. These men who write these abominations make God out to be inept or a liar. And my God is neither. My God is perfect in everything, in all his ways and everything he does. And his Bible is perfect because it, because it is from God. Because now is not the time to deny Jesus in any way. We love you all so very much. 
And we keep all of you in our prayers. Every one of you have been a gift from God to us. Our prayer is that Jesus holds you in his loving arms, just like he held me. And that is why I do all that I do to get back where I belong and where you belong as well. Back in the arms of Jesus, back in the arms of God. We always keep you and yours in our prayers with much love and more grace from above. Amen. Now I want to remind you that we have the Azusa Street open prayer line with no commercials and it is not recorded. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening starting at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time until 9 or the last caller. Now that number is 518-318-7813. So if you or a family member or friend needs prayer, please call then and we will pray for you. Now my co-host, his name is Jamie Carson, and he's a Holy Spirit-filled uh, pastor, and he is a street preacher from North uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. And please call, and we will be happy to pray for you. And God bless you, and God keep you, each and every one. And these are the last days, and we are going home soon. We have God's promise of that, for we are not appointed to wrath. So Jesus is coming very soon to take his bride home, his spotless bride. And that's why we all need to repent of sin and, and pray and, and be in the will and grace of God and not chase after these, these fake Bibles and these fake religions and not listen to a fake gospel. Because God is not in a fake gospel. And God is not in a fake church. Wherever you can find God at, if it's at the foot of your bed, so be it. But we all need to find God right now. We all need to be pleasing to God in God's will and in God's grace. And pray, pray to Jesus that we be found worthy. That we be found worthy and accountable. And that we be found worthy to escape what's coming. Because what's coming is going to be bad. We love you all so very much. And we pray for you all too. God bless you. God keep you all. Amen.